Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Prayers for Life. And today I'm coming at you with something a little bit different. It's not necessarily necessarily a devotion, but it kind of is. I just want to go over a few scriptures. I have a thought in my mind of um, something that I want to share, but couldn't really put it together. So what I want to do is I'm going to just read some scriptures. And as the Holy Spirit leads is um, some things that I want to share about the scriptures that I'm going to be reading to you. And this came to me through just watching over the last few months, the state that our nation is in right now. And I'm not saying that we weren't in a bad way before, but it seems like now people are really starting to rise up in a resistance type state and they are not really focusing attention on God and what he's doing and what he wants to do and our role as followers in, of Christ and praying for our nation and our nation's leadership. So the Bible has a lot to say about leadership and praying for that leadership. And I just want to share these scriptures with you. This is not a political station. Um, I don't ascribe to any political party. I'm not endorsing any candidate. But what I have have figured out just through prayer and watching that God has called us as followers of Christ to lift up our not only our nation, but our leaders, our earthly leaders, our government, lift them up in prayer. And I have fallen short of that over the years. And God has awakened me to the fact that our prayers matter. If you want to see a change in any situation, not just our nation, in your family, in your marriage, in your children, in your job situation, you're going to have to be faithful and diligent through prayer in order to get those changes to come about. Now, yes, God does have a plan for this nation. And if you have read or studied any of Revelation or anything in the end times, there are things that are being put in place for the end times, but it's still our job as followers of Christ to lift up not only our nation again, but our, our leadership. So um, as always, I'm reading from the New King James Version. And as I go through these scriptures, I'll say a few things, but I just want you to see, and I want you to consider instead of complaining about our leadership, our president, the Congress, the House of Representatives, the judges, the mayors, the governors. Let's lift them up in prayer. Yeah, they're not doing everything. They're not. Everyone is not moral. Everything didn't go our way, but it's still our duty. And we're going to look at that through scripture. The first scripture I want to um, share with you is Psalms 22 verse 28. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nation. God has handed over um, the rulership of the nation to men, but he is still the Lord and king over all nations. He is still Lord and king over the United States. Don't think that because a man is in office that God doesn't see and God doesn't know. There's not a person living that takes a breath and God doesn't know it. God is not blind to what is going on. God is not blind to who is in position. God knows and God sees and he does have a plan. The second scripture I want to read is First Chronicles 29 and 12. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand is in your hand it is to make great 
and to give strength to all. God gives strength to everyone that is that is alive. He gives riches and honor. He reigns over all. In his hands is power and might. He is not too weak that he can't save. He is not too distant that he can't hear. But we have to be diligent in our prayers and we have to be purposeful and we can't be manipulative and we can't be destructive in our prayers. We can't pray with a sense of tearing down. And over the last few years, this this nation has been being torn down brick by brick by man's hands. Men are tearing down this country brick by brick. And we as Christians have to take a stand and say, we stand for God and I am going to pray for the nation that I live in. It doesn't matter what you feel about who the leadership is. How do you feel about God and what he's doing and what he wants to do and what his will is for this nation? Exodus 18.21 Moreover, you shall select from all the people able men, able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. So it's our job as citizens of the United States to select when we do our election process, when we go out and vote. And you can say whatever, the elections are rigged, the elections are, are, uh, have been stolen, the votes doesn't count. It's all out there. It's our job to say we are going to get able-bodied men that fear God. And we have to pray because a lot of these people don't fear God. They get up there. They say whatever they need to say to get elected. But we have to pray that the fear of God will enter them. Men that of truth. Men that hate covetedness. And place such over thousands. Meaning your nations. Hundreds our cities, our states, rulers of 50s, um, our, well, our, like our mayors and tens, you have city council and all of that. But God says that we are to select able-bodied men that will rule, that will rule over this nation. Isaiah 9 and 6. People love to quote this one during uh, Christmas time. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The government will be upon his shoulder. Again, God does not allow anyone in position that he hasn't placed there. And it may look like, oh, this person stole the election. This person um, bribed this person or that person. No one is in a position that God doesn't know and God didn't allow. He uses us for his glory. He uses us to, to accomplish his will. And he puts people in places to do the things that needs to get done. First Timothy, Timothy 2, 1 through 2. Therefore, I exalt first of all th that supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks <clears throat> be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. Tim Paul was talking to Timothy. He said that we are to pray intercede and give thanks to all men for kings and those who are in authority for our president for our 
governors, for our mayors, the Congress, the Senate, the House of Representatives, law enforcement, our military. We need to be surrounding these people in prayer. No matter how much we feel like these people are corrupt or whatever your thoughts and feelings are, no one should have to go to work. And I'm talking right now about law enforcement. People are hunting law enforcement down like they're animals. But that man or woman, that police officer, that SWAT team, those sheriff, uh, border patrol guards, that is someone's son or daughter, someone's mother or father, brother or sister, friend, neighbor. They hang out together. They go fishing. They go um play golf they do whatever they do that is a life that's out there and imagine that your son or daughter says I'm gonna go be a police officer do you want to fear that every time they go out in their uniform someone is going to hunt them down just for the fact that they are a police officer I mean, think about that. We have to be considerate of other people. And I know many of you that are listening to this aren't the ones that's going out and um, firing upon our law enforcement. But maybe you have have built up a hate or bitterness or anger towards the law enforcement because of the things that has been going on. Rightly, I understand that. I totally understand it. You have some people in law enforcement. I've seen the videos um, where the police officers have been beating on um, other people. And you're just sitting there like, oh, my God, why is this person doing that? What kind of pent up anger is in there that will cause them to not only bring the person down to the ground and handcuff them, but beat them or shoot them? We have to, again, surround these people in prayer because the enemy is using them to accomplish his goal. The nation is being divided on all sides through racism. We have an, a divide with authority, the police against the civilians, the government against the, um, against civilians. People are rising up against the military because they hate what the military stands for. We rising up against our neighbors. We're rising up against Christians and non-Christians. Those that are for Republicans, against Republicans. This nation is being divided and it's being brought down brick by brick. Now, I don't know how many of you have, but I have actually lived in other countries. For not just vacationing, but lived in other countries. And those countries were nice, but I would rather live here. You know, with all of the problems, I would still rather live in the United States. So I don't want to see this country torn down. I rather pray for our nation, pray for our leadership. And and watch things change through prayer. Our prayers has the power to change things if we would if we would get down on our knees and pray. Also in first Timothy chapter two, verse thirteen, let every soul be subject to the governing authority. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Again, Paul is talking to uh, to Timothy. There is no authority except from God. No authority. Even in your school, on your job, your supervisor, your manager, no authority is in place except from God. No one exists that God hasn't appointed. And that goes back to what I said before. There is nobody in a position and God doesn't know that person is a, is in position no matter how they felt they got there. 
if God didn't want them there, they would have never got there, no matter how many uh, backs they stabbed, lies they told, votes they stole, money they paid. If God didn't want them in that position, they would have never got there. So don't think again that things are happening and God doesn't know. Romans chapter 13 verse 7. Render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Daniel 2 21. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. God removes kings that he wants to remove. He rises up kings that he wants to raise up. He gives wisdom to those that are wise, those that are pray. The Bible says pray for Pray for wisdom and he will put it on you liberally. He will give you heapings of wisdom. If we pray for wisdom, we should pray for godly knowledge and godly understanding. And for the leadership that doesn't know to pray, we have to pray for them. That they receive godly wisdom, godly counsel, godly knowledge, and godly understanding. It's our job as followers of Christ to Pray for our leadership. Psalm 75 verses 6 through 7. For exaltation comes neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south. But God is judge. He puts down one and exalts another. God exalts, God promotes. Promotion doesn't come from, oh, my boss really likes me or I didn't get promoted, my boss hates me. Promotion, ex exaltation comes neither from the east, from the west or from the south, but from God. God is judge. He puts down one and he exalts another. Proverbs. Chapter 8, 14 through 17. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. So counsel is from God. Sound wisdom comes from God. Understanding, strength by him, the president, the governor, the mayor rules. He loves those that diligently seek his face. If you diligently seek God, he will find you. And my last scripture that I'm going to share with you before we go. Second Chronicles 7, 14 through 16. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. For now I have chosen and sacrificed this house. Sanctified, sorry. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually if my people if the children of god 
who are called by his name, if we as followers of Christ will humble ourselves, if we will pray, if we will seek the face of God, not our will, not our own desires, if we will turn from our wicked ways, turn from our complaining, turn from the woe is me, turn from the old things didn't go my way, so I'm going to cry like a two-year-old. God promised that he will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal our land. Our nation, our land needs a healing. It is our job, again, as followers of Christ, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek God for this nation, to turn from our wicked ways so that God will forgive our sins, the sin of this land, and heal this land. This land is buried in pride, selfishness, greed, vanity. We love pornography. We love to get a divorce, covet, desire whatever anybody else has had. Anybody else have, even in our commercials, it shows you that you should be jealous and envious of what your neighbor has. If we would humble ourselves, seek the face of God, turn from our wicked ways, God has promised to hear from heaven. He has promised to forgive our sin and he has promised to heal our land. We have to humble ourselves seek his face, pray, and turn from our wicked ways so that this land will be healed. We are on a slippery slope, and we're going down really fast. And I really feel that we have to begin to pray. And many of you are on intercessory prayer teams, or you may you have corporate prayer at church, or even once a week, just begin to pray for this nation. Um, what I've done this week, I've broken it up. One night I prayed for the president and his family, his wife, his children, for their protection. Um, the next night I prayed for the Congress, the House of Representatives, the Senate. The next night I prayed for the judges. I prayed for law enforcement to include like FBI, TSA, Homeland Security, the Sheriff Department, the Police Department, SWAT teams, pray for local and state government, governors and mayors, pray for your school superintendent and all elected officials in your state. We have to pray for these people because we send our children to school and these superintendents, these governors, these mayors pass laws saying what is going to be taught in our schools and what our children going to be allowed to um, have around them. What information they're going to feed they they talk and they t they talk and they make these laws of what they're going to feed our children and if we don't pray for these people and put the right ones in place who knows i mean it's already bad out there with just and that's just the school system and then you're talking about the mayor who is in charge of a city, some small city, some major cities, and they're spending the money and it's never going to where it's supposed to. The roads have potholes and the crime is still up and schools are closing and we got rundown buildings and houses. We have the police department. Some police in the area I live in, they have events and the police don't show up. So, I mean, it's a lot that we need to pray for and focus on instead of just grumbling and complaining because we feel because we feel the wrong person is in office. So, again, I just petition you. Let's just get together. 
in in pray about this even if only five people watch this video that's five people that are praying i pray that more than five see this video and you get what i'm saying maybe the words aren't coming out as eloquently as you would like but i think through the holy spirit the point is getting across and that you would truly just say I am going to pray for my nation because this is where I live. No matter how you feel about this country, you here now, you live in here, you're a resident and you're using the resources that are here. So while you are here, let's pray for this nation. So right now, let's pray. So God, I want to give you thanks and praise for this time that you have given me to share with your people. And God, I pray that the words that I have said will touch and pierce the hearts of every person that you have it there to um, pierce. I pray for this nation. I pray that people, the children of God will rise up and begin to take a stand for this nation and say, we are going to pray God's will over this nation. So God, I thank you and I praise you in Jesus name. Amen.